So I was very fortunate to be interviewed just recently on the mental health of the dating industry. And uh, it got me thinking about some of the scenarios that I've had over the years with clients or guys that I've known who have suffered from depression uh, besides anxiety, and then it's led to them self-harming uh, or even committing suicide or finding themselves addicted to different substances of sorts to try and distract themselves from the problems that they've got. So I wanted to give you 10 tips of things that I would recommend that you do if you are certainly feeling the anxiety, but you are also someone who is very open to depression. Now, if you do have uh, any depressive episodes, unfortunately, I am not a doctor. I can only recommend that you certainly reach out for the right kind of help if you need it. But the tips that I am going to share with you in this video is certainly stuff that has helped guys that I have worked with. And even some of these as well have been great for me when I've either had my anxiety hit the roof uh, or if I've been through some really depressing moment and I've needed to try and find a way out of it rather than allowing myself to just kind of wallow in the misery and just let things get worse. So tip number one is don't listen to depressive music if you are in a very anxious or depressed state. It might sound kind of obvious, but I think we're all kind of drawn to listening to music that kind of matches our mood. You know, if you're in a good mood or in a great mood, then you would listen to very upbeat music that only just kind of fuels that optimism for the day. But when people tend to get really depressed or they feel very negative or down about themselves, then we'll listen to much heavier or much harsher music that only just sort of tends to uh, fuel, I think, the negativity even more because we can relate to it. We can relate to the words and the lyrics that are being said you know, which sometimes can be good because it's a way for us to express how we're feeling, especially if we can't find the words ourselves. But I have met people who, when they listen to depressing music, if they're not in the best of moods, it only makes them feel worse. So if you can, try and listen to something more upbeat, something more optimistic if you can. Or if not, listen to music, listen to podcasts that motivate you just to snap you out of this way of thinking and at least then you're going to be fueling more positive thoughts rather than the negative ones. Tip number two is I want you to make sure that you are getting fresh air. Sometimes when we are anxious and we stay indoors we might close ourselves in our rooms You've got the windows closed, the door closed and stuff. And when you're breathing that same air, you're kind of sort of stagnating that air, if that's if that's the right word for it. But getting some fresh air just at least helps you to have a clearer mind and a clearer body. So I'm sure there is going to be some science behind it, uh, which I, I won't include in this video, but... I find that either breathing fresh air by opening a window or better yet, just going for a walk, getting that kinetic energy going in the body, as well as breathing fresher air and being in the greenery and walking on the grass and stuff can do wonders for your mental health. Tip number three is to try and force yourself to go and exercise. Now, there is something to be said that when you can get that testosterone pumping throughout your body, it can override the cortisol, the anxiety that you've got that's flowing instead. And in fact, by focusing on lifting weights or running and moving or shifting that concentration off of your negative thoughts onto something that is essentially uh, increasing your productivity and stamina and endurance and strength on your body, you will also snap yourself out of any negative thoughts that you've had. Tip number four is something that I definitely would recommend is try and watch comedy shows if you are feeling depressed. Um, I would find uh, definitely for me over the years, if ever I had some kind of low point, 
being able to watch something that would just one distract me from uh how i was currently feeling at that moment in time to also something that it was getting me to laugh and smile and just shift my emotions and energy into something that wasn't so sad and anxious um i found for me that that worked wonders um, you can watch literally whatever you want comedy wise. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a TV show. It could be uh, a movie. It could be maybe just some funny videos or memes that you found off of the internet or off of YouTube, but just something that, again, distracts you from your thoughts and gets you just to think about things in a much funnier and happy way. Tip number five is to try and speak to a friend or hang out with a friend if you can. Being alone isn't the most healthiest option for you because the more that you do spend time on your own, uh, there is a saying that misery loves company. Um, in this instance, if you are on your own and you're not having at least someone else influence you in a more positive way, then you're only going to be your own motivator to stay more anxious and more depressed. Now, if you do go and spend time with a friend, don't worry, you don't have to talk about anything. You can even just say to your friend, like, look, I'm I'm feeling really bad today. Can I just hang out with you and we just do something? And I, I'm cool with like not really talking, but just for a while, I, I just need to, to be around someone. Is that okay? You know what? Your friends, if they're supportive, will be there for you and they will help you out with that. And this is something that I definitely have for me. If I ever feel like I need someone to talk to, I've got my closest friends that I can speak to about literally anything. And if you don't have friends that you can speak to about stuff, then by all means, do reach out to a therapist or try and find someone that you can speak to just to say to them like look you know what I'm I'm feeling really anxious or I am feeling really depressed um can we just talk about stuff or can we just hang out uh, you know or can I just keep you company you can do you can carry on working you can cook you can do whatever but I just need someone to to be around just to um just so I don't feel so alone and I can assure you people will do that. If if they're really supportive, if they're really friends, then definitely you will get that support that you need. So tip number six, which might surprise you, is to do chores in the house. So I find that for me, being productive uh, can make a big difference to shifting my mood. If I am feeling uh, quite anxious about something, then I feel like I need to do something proactive that just makes me feel like that I'm actually doing some good in my life. So even if it's as simple or small as making the bed, washing the dishes, hoovering the house, washing or cleaning or wiping my TV and desks and stuff, just doing something, even little jobs and even just a couple of them can make an incremental shift in how you feel about yourself. And then you start realizing that actually I have the power or I have the control and the ability to do something about my life. And it's an incredibly simple mindset shift from such a very easy task to do. And then from that, I will then very much rationalize, right, why am I in a bad mood? Why do I feel anxious or depressed? What can I do about it? And then suddenly it's almost like I will give myself a roadmap of things to do. And even with clients and friends and stuff as well, especially people who have had it far worse, that they then start thinking, oh, well, actually, yeah, I could do this job or I could do that or I could get myself out of the house. So taking incremental steps to taking action with stuff, even if it's things that generally don't make much of a difference to your life or impact it in any way, it does at least get that ball rolling. It does create these stepping stones to taking much larger actions that will help you with your anxiety. So tip number seven is to meditate, to allow yourself to calm down. Now, there are so many different kind of meditations out there, um, you know, from doing mindfulness meditations where you just sit there, focus on your breathing and kind of learn to let go of your thoughts or I like doing the Wim Hof method, which is kind of like a, a prana 
pranayama kind of exercise where you're kind of like like almost like hyperventilating and then learning to exhale hold your breath for as long as possible and then inhale and force the oxygen the clean fresh oxygen into your brain just so then you can learn to reset the sympathetic nervous system and that for me does wonders it really really calms me down but this is one of those where it's each to their own find something that you find meditative i even have known people over the years that for them their way to meditate is to actually build models of toys or to maybe sit and play on the playstation for for a couple of hours Whatever it is, as long as you can learn to do it in moderation, especially if it's like playing on a games console, but being able to regulate your breathing and your concentration and focus, especially through some kind of meditation, can also help to bring you out of some kind of slump. Tip number eight is to try and stay away from your mobile phone. So I think it's probably safe to say with everyone that as soon as we start feeling depressed and we go on to Instagram or Facebook or even YouTube or TikTok, you start watching other people having amazing and successful lives and they're traveling around the world and they're eating all their favorite foods or trying cuisines that they've never done before or they're doing a workout and they've got the body that you would have that any guy would be jealous of. And you just start feeling even worse about yourself, all because you are now comparing your life to other people's lives. So the best thing you can do in those moments is to just stay away from your phone. Either turn it off, put it in another room, lock it away, whatever, but just stay away from your phone at any moment that you are feeling really anxious and certainly are having those moments of depression. It's only going to fuel it and make it worse if you're comparing yourself to other people. So tip number nine is something that most men don't really do, but actually they should probably consider is to actually write down their thoughts and consider it more like a like a brain dump of information rather than you holding on to all these doubts and worries and concerns that you've got, put them on paper or write them on a Word document and then Allow yourself to visually see and read this negativity that you've got. And in a kind of neuro-linguistic programming sort of way, you're actually pulling yourself out of the moment and you're positioning yourself in this like third person perspective that actually allows you to kind of like judge and critique this thought process that you were holding on to. And like with most people, when you start questioning it, you start going, is that really a problem? Is that really an issue? How, how could I deal with that? If that was a friend who was struggling with this, what kind of advice would I give them? And when you're then ready to let go of that thought, just literally delete everything that you've just written and be okay with like just letting it go. One of the best exercises of this that you can do is if you write it on paper and then read it and then when you are happy to let go of this thought rather than holding on to it and letting it be a concern or a worry, burn it. Light the paper on fire, obviously in a very safe kind of way, but light it on fire, destroy it and allow it then to be a metaphor of you destroying this horrible thought that was bringing you down. And lastly, number 10 is to sleep it off. I think sometimes, even for me, when I've been in a bad mood, one of the easiest things is to just switch off my brain and then let it calm down. And again, using the metaphor of like uh, a cloud or a storm passing through, you know, it will come and then it will go. And sometimes the fastest and easiest way is to just sort of sleep it off. And when you wake up, suddenly you feel more refreshed, you feel more relaxed and you aren't holding on to that thought that you were holding on to maybe about an hour or so ago before. Um, and, uh, and then I find that even once I've done that, 
or even when I've recommended it to other people, it's then so much easier to try and do some of the other tips that I've already recommended because now you're also not focusing on the negativity. You've almost like just deleted this horrible depression or anxiety that you were feeling in the moment. You've removed the emotion from the situation and now you can kind of rationalize what do I want to do now? What else could I do to help me with how I'm feeling with my anxiety? Or what else could I do to prevent me from suddenly feeling depressed because of just how alone or anxious I am potentially feeling? I hope that you can take these tips into consideration. They have all been tried and tested either with myself or certainly with people that I've known who have mental health issues or who have suffered and have needed some support in their lives. So these definitely give them a go. And of course, if you are suffering, don't suffer in silence. Do find yourself support. If you need me, I am here for you. If you need to go to a doctor or if you need to speak to the Samaritans, go and do that too. But it is really important that you always have support in your life and you never feel that you are alone with stuff. You know, when I was chatting in my interview a few days ago, um, it came up with the topic of people that I knew um, who had committed suicide and who had self-harmed and had uh, developed addictions to things and had mental health issues. And it was really one of the reasons that encouraged me to start going down the therapy and life coaching route to just prevent these sort of scenarios playing out. And it did get me thinking that, you know what, maybe... If I could share with guys the things that would proactively make a difference with people that I knew, then why not? You know, they are certainly alternative methods of therapy. Uh, so, of course, you know, if you need to go to a doctor, go to a doctor, speak to a professional and whether or not you need medication, that is obviously down to their discretion. But if you are someone who is maybe suffering on your own, I obviously I don't want that to happen. So you have to though take some responsibility and you have to try, try and do something about it. If you just allow yourself to wallow in your misery, I can promise you, you are only going to make it worse for yourself. You have to be your own best friend here and you have to support yourself. And all of the things that I've given you in this video are very simple, mild baby steps of things that you can quite easily implement in this very moment if you are someone who is feeling anxious or depressed. So other than that, if you do need help, by all means, check out my website. I do offer free client assessments with people to find out where you're at and where I can also give you feedback and things that you can proactively do to work on your life, as well as I do offer different therapies as well if you are feeling that anxiety. But other than that, if you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel so I can reach even more men to help them with their anxiety and also their depression as well, uh, because I don't want any guy really to suffer. And let me know in the comments below, have you tried any of these things and how have they worked for you as well? But I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. And again, thank you very much for watching.